Hey everyone, welcome back to Cuddy's Bookshelf and welcome to week one of Spooky Season. So I'm just about to decorate the library so I thought I would bring you along with me decorating and then I will get into the books that I am going to wrap and actually wrap them, decorate the car, you know, all the good things going into Spooky Season. I am so excited. So this is my TBR jar for all of the books that I've read so far this year. And this is about to get very, very red because I have got so many like thrillers and horrors and everything that I want to read in October. So yeah, I'm so excited. So let's get started. I have got all of this stuff in a farm foods bag, <laughs> you know, storage. And I'm just gonna place them around the room, set up some leaves and stuff, and then get to decorating the car. So. I've noticed I've got a lot more books on my shelves that fill up my shelves than I did last year so it's very hard to place things <laughs> room is all decorated and the car is ready for books to be put on so before I wrap the books I would just talk through them all and let you know what is going to be wrapped for me reading throughout the month um one of the, the first one I think it was from a book box I am not 100% sure but I feel like it was and it is The Devil Makes Three um I'm not going to be reading too much into it I'll read the back of this one because it's just a quote and it says the devil seeks his due from two unsuspecting students so dark academia vibes maybe um i just thought that it sounded intriguing and it is the perfect time of year to read something like this so yeah that is the first one and the next four are all definitely from book boxes these are from the evernight box from illumicrate is their horror subscription box and i've been wanting to get to these and i've been saving them for spooky season so the first one is invocations by crystal sutherland which looks like this like the creepiness like the hand coming from yeah and then mm, yeah yeah so there is that one as well um the next one is the newest one from evernight which is the eyes are the best part by minoki kim this sounds really grotesque and like it's gonna turn my stomach but it has me intrigued i don't know what about it has me intrigued the fact that she is drawn to eyes and finds them salivating is not something I thought I would gravitate towards but I am <laughs> really intrigued I don't know what's wrong with me but yeah it, um, I know that the main character she has dreams of rooms full of eyes a certain man's eyes but yeah sounds really disturbing and i'm here for it the next one is caitlin starling's the last to leave the room this was another one like i said from evernight um has me intrigued i just really want to get to so as many book box books as i can and then the last one which i've heard mixed reviews about to be fair but it is murder road by simone st james um i absolutely love the cover to this and i was really hoping that i'm gonna love it because i've heard people that didn't like it at all but fingers crossed i have a different experience with it so yeah this is the last of the book box books then there is a few there's a couple of books that i started the trilogies or series of last spooky season which was my first ever spooky season with filming and it was the housemaid and straight away after I read that, I brought The Housemaid Secret and I also read that in those vlogs. I added it on to the end. So it's only right that I saved The Housemaid is Watching by Frieda McFadden 
for this spooky season so I have saved this since it came out I've been dying to read it I'm so excited for it so yeah there is this one and also last spooky season I read 12 Secrets which I absolutely loved by Robert Gold so I again went out and brought 11 Liars is that what it's called 11 Liars I was right so I went out and brought 11 Liars and read that also in the Spooky Season vlogs. So again, it was only right that I saved 10 seconds for this Spooky Season. I do know Nine Lives, I think the next one is, is coming out very soon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait till Spooky Season for it, but we will see how I get on with this one. I really enjoyed the last two books with um, Robert Gold. It was my first time reading his books and I am really enjoying the series. So yeah, there is that one. I did add another Freedom McFadden, which is The Locked Door. Um, I got quite a few Freedom McFaddens, but I didn't want to put too many of just one author in this TBR. I wanted to try and get a big range of books from different authors. So I do have this one. If I do have time, at the end of the month like if I get through these quite quick I can always add books on which is because I kept pulling books off my shelf I didn't realize how many books I was saving for spooky season and yeah there's a lot so I've got a lot that I can you know if I if I haven't had enough so the locked door is another one the next book piqued my interest because I did read the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and this is um, Stuart Turton's new one and it's The Last Murder at the End of the World. Again, I've heard mixed reviews on this. So I am a little bit nervous going into it, but I, I really want to read it myself before, like, you know, being put off. So I'm really hoping that I like this as much as I did the, the, um, Stuart Turton's other book. So yeah, there's that one. Then... I love this author so much. Um, she originally started out with more like contemporary romances and then went into thrillers and every time I absolutely love it. And it is Dorothy Coomson and this is Every Smile You Fake. I absolutely love Dorothy Coomson. I own every single book that she has brought out, even the one pound book that she brought out on World Book Day. I hunted that down and got that also. A great little short story, by the way. Um, and yeah, so the new Dorothy Coomson, I, I'm, oh, I'm just so excited for these books. I am so, so excited. I've been waiting to read them. The next three are ones that I picked up when out in supermarkets. I just seen them randomly. This one I think is going to scare the crap out of me because the title, Someone in the Attic, I've said it once and I'll say it again, anything to do with like home invasion, like someone being in the home that's not supposed to be there scares the living out of me because I think it's because it's so real like a lot of horrors and thrillers it's it's like a once in a lifetime thing you know what I mean it's very rare that it would happen whereas yeah this could actually happen anywhere at any time and that scares me so yeah we have this someone in the attic I also got Anna O. Oh. I seen a few people read this. I think it's about a girl called Anna. So Anna O oh hasn't opened her eyes for four years and it's going into why or something along those lines. It gives me very much you know, the silent patient where she hasn't spoke for a while. Um, I'm getting that sort of energy from it and I really enjoyed that book. So hopefully... I love that one too and then the last one that I got from supermarket is the switch and it's something to do with the wives swapping places but one of the like one set of the couples have like different bad intentions something along those lines and yeah I'm really looking forward to that one and then I did get some translated like thrillers horrors in here and I have the Hojin murders I am really excited to read from this author. I have another one on here as well um, that I picked up recently. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping that I absolutely love it. And again, like I say, if I do love it and want to read more from that author this month, I do have another one. And then there is Butter. I 
I hunted this down. I went to Waterstones purposely for this book and I am I'm just so excited. It's to do with a woman being accused of killing a man through the power of food. Something along those lines. I I'm just I keep saying I'm excited. I just really am. I've been waiting so long to read these thrillers and horrors and I mean I do have one <laughs> cozy read but and you probably can guess what that is because it's been everywhere. I also have another Lucinda Berry um, my mum brought me a whole bunch of Lucinda Berry when she borrowed Saving Noah from me and I really enjoyed that one. I did read When She Returned um, last month which I I did enjoy. I find Lucinda Berry very page turny. I, I always want to keep reading but I think When She Returned just disappointed me at the end. Like the thing, I don't know if I was just really good at detecting it but it felt in your face like you knew that it was coming and it did like it wasn't anything like really shocking or like a twisty or anything but let's hope for this one and this one is keep your friends close and yeah so there is a Lucinda Berry on there then we have again because it's a topic that I'm absolutely terrified of so I've got The Stranger in Her House by John Mars I've heard really great things about this so I had to pick it up and just look at that flop oh my goodness that just excites me so much when I read this it's going to be such a nice book to hold when I'm reading but again obviously Stranger in the House it speaks for itself and I'm ready to be scared so <laughs> The next book, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm really, really scared to even talk about. <laughs> and it is No One Rides For Free by Judith Sonnet. This, this, I, when I hauled this, if you've seen the haul, it, I came across a warning mid, mid flip through. And I won't reread it, but it's basically a warning to carry on reading at your own risk so yeah it's my first extreme horror so this is the only like extreme horror that's in here and i'm really nervous about it i'm not gonna lie but i am determined to scare myself this year so yeah i mean with thrillers i think with these ones especially like the home invasion ones I feel like I'm. it's going to be run for your life up the stairs to bed and like fly onto your bed rather than stepping into bed so because in case whoever's under the, the bed can get you. <laughs> yes, I am that person because I'm a scaredy cat, but I'm a self-confessed scaredy cat and I do like to be scared. So yeah, this one scares me. I think this one is about a mother who is travelling with her daughter and son and she stops off at a gas station to fill up. And while she goes in to the store, a man gets in the car and it like shit hits the fan from there. So yeah, there's that one. Makes me so nervous. And then I do have a nice little cozy book, which is the Pumpkin Spice Calf. It's the season to fall in love. So we have a nice cute romance. I I think this book is gonna be right up my street. Um very, you know. I'm hoping that I get through some of them first, read this and then get this afterwards so I can sort of, you know when you watch a horror film and then put cartoons on afterwards so you can sort of get over it? <laughs> that just me too. But yeah, you know, so I'm hoping to read this first and then, then read this. But knowing my luck, it will be the other way around. I will get really nice and cosy and then this will come out. But yeah. That is all of the books that I'm going to be wrapping. I hope that you are excited for the books that I am about to read throughout the month. Like I say, if I do get through these quite quick, because I tend to read thrillers really, really fast because, you know, you, you just need to know, don't you? I'm too nosy to not read them fast. Yeah, let me know if any of these are on your TBR, if you've read any of these, if any of them's intriguing to you. Like I say, when I'm reading them, I will tell you more about them. And give you my thoughts on them obviously but yeah I'll get to wrapping them now and we can put them on the car I I did want so why I haven't when I had time off I have been still thinking about you know my channel and that 
um, and I already made the numbers so there is 19, 19 books here and <laughs> I was trying to be creative and like draw little things on them like hocus pocus and there's like crime scene tape there is like a pin board <laughs> for like murder mysteries footsteps like little ghosties monsters in the corner you know just random stuff on them and um i have already pre-cut the wrapping paper ready as well so i it's just a quick wrap and i don't have to keep cutting them out I did run out of spooky season wrapping paper so again I've used my artistic skills to draw like ghosties and spiders on my paint paper we've got like spooky season we have boo 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 and we have some pumpkins which again it is all crudely drawn because you know I'm not an artist but yeah let's get to wrapping them It's done it's all set up so I'm ready to pick my first read but I do currently have a book on the go so I'm gonna try and finish that before I start this one so yeah I would probably pick in fact shall I just pick one now shall I just pick one now because I've only got a couple of chapters left of a book that I was reading at the end of last month sorry we'll pick one now so the first pick of Spooky Season will be this one and it is number four. So number four. See I've only just wrapped them and I still have no clue what it is. It is, oh it's Robert Gold's 10 seconds. So like I say, I did um, read the first two last spooky season, so really looking forward to getting into this one. So yeah, the first one. Ten seconds, Robert Gold. Oh, I'm really excited. Gonna have something to eat because I haven't ate yet today. It's quarter past seven at night, so I better get something to eat and then finish the book that I'm currently reading. And then I can start jumping into this. Um, I may read a little bit tonight. If not, I will start it tomorrow. But I will update you once I tell you my thoughts. And yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed watching me decorate the library room and set up the cart. Ready for this month. I am so excited for my spooky season reads. Honestly, I am so excited. Oh. It is now the next day. I did spend the majority of yesterday reading i finished the book that i was currently reading and now i have got through a big chunk of this i only have a few chapters left so i was waiting and i'm gonna film myself reading it i'm gonna get myself cozy in my little book nook and 
yeah, I am enjoying this. I'm not enjoying it as much as the first two. I don't find it as addictive, but I am enjoying it. And in this one, Ben has, at the start, he's at a dinner party for somebody's birthday, celebrating someone's birthday. And his boss and boss slash friend is there with him. And he puts her in the car that has come to collect her. The next day, she has gone missing. He is working with her family and the police to try and track her down and what has happened and in doing so he has to reach a case that she had investigated a decade ago. All of these um, secrets and twists are happening as the you know the revelations are happening through the book and it's just started like really picking up and I so towards the end yeah I am enjoying it but not as much as the others but I will be getting to finishing that soon and I will give you a proper wrap up after. I did want to also show you some of the books I mentioned in my September reading wrap up. I said that I got some more translated fiction come but obviously I hadn't been filming so they haven't been putting up a haul. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's quite a few and I don't want this part of the section of the video to last forever because it's spooky season I want to get all the thrillers and horrors in here but I did have I did mention it in that video because I have the Kamigawa food detectives I did get the second one come through the post and this is restaurant of lost recipes I'm really excited for these two I did wait to read this one because I knew this one was coming out I sort of did the same with um, days at the Marizaki bookshop and more days at the Marizaki bookshop because I knew this one was coming out I saved off reading this one and I've sort of done the same so now the second one has come I will be reading these very soon and I'm so excited so there is two well technically one but two I haven't read <laughs> then I will go into will prescribe you a cat so this is about a clinic that appears and only people that's really suffering with emotional pain can see this clinic and instead of medication they prescribe you a cat a cat that will help you through whatever you're going through and I just think that sounds so amazing and sweet and I do find with translated fiction that you really it really makes you contemplate life choices and it's just a different way of seeing the world and I absolutely love them and this is why I have got so many in this pile but yeah this is another one. Then we have The Lantern of Lost Memories. It says in Mr Harisaka's photography studio in the mountains someone is waking up as if from a dream. There is a stack of photos on their lap, one for every day of their life. Mr Harisaki will ask them to choose a photo from each year those that captured their most treasured memories to be placed in a beautiful Japanese lantern. Once completed, it will be set spinning and their cherished moments will flash before their eyes, guiding them to another world. That sounds so cute. Oh God, this is going to be so amazing. But like our most fumbled over photographs, our favourite memories fade with age. So each visitor to the studio has a chance to choose one day to return to and photograph again. Each has a breathtaking story to tell from the old woman rebuilding a community in T uh, Tokyo after a disaster to the flawed Yakuza man who remembers a time when he was kind and a strong child who is fighting to survive. And then it says an extraordinary moving wise. The Lantern of Lost Memories is a beautiful Japanese tale about the people that make us and the moments that change us. I'm sorry, but... That just sounds so incredible. Then we have a, I think this is my most recent purchase other than one that's been gifted to me. And this one is Marigold Mind Laundry. This cover is so cute. I love it. And it says, welcome to our mind laundry where we wash the stains from your heart. When Yong Jung accidentally misuses her power causing her entire family to vanish, she vows to spend a million lives searching for them. Overnight in the village of Marigold, she creates her mind laundry, 
where she converts bad memories into stains on a t-shirt. After a wash, they emerge as red petals that dance in the air. We meet five wounded souls, a frustrated young filmmaker, a tortured social media influencer, a distraught mother who has discovered her husband's other family, a young woman too tanned by her lover, and Yeung Ki? Sorry if I mispronounced that. A victim of bullying who escapes into a routine job. Soul stirring and empowering, Marigold Mine Laundry has already demonstrated its power to move the hearts of thousands of readers. As we laugh, wonder and grow, we too learn how to tap into the positivity and magic that lies within us. Again. I can't wait. Then we have the book that was gifted to me. KJ sent me this one. I am so grateful. Um, she also sent me like a little pamper kit and it was just lovely. This is the housekeeper and the professor. And this one says, every morning the professor and the housekeeper are introduced to one another. Because of a head injury 17 years ago, the professor only has 18 minute memory. Although he may not remember what he had for breakfast, his mind is alive with elegant mathematical equations from the past. He devises clever maths, maths riddles based on the housekeeper's shoe size or her birthday. And the numbers reveal a sheltering and poetic will to both the housekeeper and her 10 year old son. With each new equation, those three lost souls forge a bond that runs far deeper than memory. <sighs> I'm so excited for this one. Honestly, these just all sound so amazing. I really want to get to them. And I'm like, oh, spooky season first. But I do have the chance to pick a lot of my December tbr like what i'm gonna wrap for christmas reads and what is more cozier than the sound of these books and that's what you want at christmas time i do have a couple of like christmas romances and a christmas thriller and some poetry i want to get to also but these are gonna add i just uh, i do only have three more to show you but i really want to show you because i'm so excited for them so you can you you will be seeing me read these very very soon and it is the full moon coffee shop and this one says, your destiny is no matter of chance. Under a glistening full moon, a Kyoto coffee shop with no fixed location or opening hours appears only where and when it's needed. Serving fragrant teas, the finest coffees and delicious desserts, it is entirely run by talking cats. <laughs> I just want to go. I just want to go. The coffee shop attracts customers who have lost their way in life. From a down-on-her-look screenwriter and a lovesick TV director to a misunderstood stylist and a failed video game developer, in the middle of the night, the coffee shop's feline guides take them on an astrological journey which forces the characters to face up to the past in order to discover their destiny. And as each of them uncovers their purpose, their paths all become somehow intertwined. And then it says... Hot woman and magical, the full moon coffee shop will remind you that it's never too late to discover your purpose. <laughs> I'm just, honestly, I, I can't, I can't deal with how excited I am with these books. But just watching this, how amazing do these sound? Like the coziness, the magicalness of each of them. The next one is the blanket cats. And this one says, is three days with a cat enough to change your life? The troubled and the anxious of Tokyo are desperate to find out. They all have their problems and they all want to believe that a feline companion from a unique pet shop can help them find a solution. But there are rules. The cats must be returned after three days and they must always sleep with their own familiar blankets. In the blanket cats, we meet seven such customers including a couple struggling with infertility, a middle-aged woman on the run from the police and two families in very different, different circumstances simply seeking joy. But like all their kind, the blanket cats are mysterious creatures with their own unknowledgeable agendas who delight in confounding expectations and perhaps what their hosts are looking for isn't what they really need. Three days may not be enough to change your life, but it might be enough to change how you see it. 
yes please the last one finally sorry if you don't like translated fiction and this is bored you but i'm absolutely obsessed with it at the minute and oh, i'm really excited i don't know how many times i've said excited during this little segment but i really am i really am i just feel five star vibes through all of these <sighs> So the last one anyway is Yunnam Dong's Smiling Laundry Mat. I have seen this everywhere at the minute as well. So I was so glad that I pre-ordered it because I'm hoping that it's worth all the hype. I think it's from the translator. I'm sure, where is it? Shannon Tan, is that the one that did Welcome to Is it this one? Yes. If you remember, I read this book, which is the Welcome to the Hung Nam Dong's Bookshop, and it is translated by Shannon Tan, and I absolutely loved this book to the point where I brought the paperback after I read it in hardback because I want to go back through it and annotate it. So, yeah, this I think this is what brought the attention for me to pre-order this is because it was translated by the same translator and this one says anyway another tangent situated at the heart of a rapidly genifying district of seoul the yunnan dong smiling laundry mat is a place where the extraordinary stories of ordinary residents unfold it is already a haven of tranquility and a reflection for locals but when someone leaves a notebook behind the laundromat becomes a place that brings people together one by one, customers start jotting down candid diary entries, opening their hearts and inviting acts of kindness from neighbours who were once just faces in the crowd. But there is more to the notebook than first appears. And before long, the laundromat's regulars are teaming up to solve a mystery and help its former owner find peace. A heartwarming, healing debut, but instantly captured the hearts of the Korean readers. This is a novel about the preciousness of human relationships and the power of sodality in a world that is increasingly cold, fast-paced and virtual. Again. Incredible. I was going to say excited. I'm trying not to say excited, but I can't help it. Like these all sound so amazing and I can't wait to get to them. Let me know if you have read any of these that I am talking about because I would love to know your thoughts but I have just been on I've noticed that a few booktubers now have started um, reading that wasn't reading translated fiction I've started reading some of the books that I've read and that makes me really excited to get like more opinions on it but yeah let me know what you think to the books that I've just mentioned I did I have picked up other books like um, I nipped to Waterstones I went to Waterstones with my brother for the first time he has just got into reading and I was going to film it. I think I filmed me, my cake and a cup of tea, but I didn't film anything else because I was just so excited that one of my siblings had got into reading <laughs> that I was like, and this is this section and this is this section and you should really read this and like bought him a couple of books because I was just so excited. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, someone I like, I'm close with is reading. But yeah, like another book that I bought was Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door. So this is a thriller. I've heard really good things about it. So I picked that up out of a voucher thing that work got me um, for working there for over 10 years now. So I got this and um, some box sets of classics, you know, the little mini black classics and the mini modern classics. I got those out of it. So yeah, I have been picking other books up as well, but... I'm really excited about these ones. I'm so excited. But anyway, I will stop rambling on because I've been talking about books for quite some time. And I mean, that is what you're here for because it's a bit different if I was talking about something else for that amount of time. But I've been rambling and I'm still doing it now. End the bloody clip. Oh my goodness. This is what you get. If you are new to my channel and not seen any of my previous vlogs, welcome. You're about to see me go on so many tangents during this month that... I have to actually physically say to myself, stop bloody talking and end the clip. But yeah, I'm going to read the end of this and then we will pick a new one from the cart.
finished it. I did really enjoy it. I really liked the ending. It was it was sad. Then there is a little surprise at the end. I enjoyed that. It really makes you think about the people in your life and how they can influence you on the actions that you take and seep poison into you basically if they are doing it enough you will listen and yeah it, it's it's a really good a really good thriller i enjoyed it like i say i wasn't as addictive to it as i was the first two um the first one is my favorite but yeah it's still still a really great thriller i i enjoyed it but that means i need to unwrap another one so we'll go back to near the car <laughs> what i'm gonna do is the ones that i've read i'm gonna put at the end and then slowly move it along to you know so we'll pick our next one and it will be this one which is number 10 oh one's fell over so it's my very badly drawn pumpkins <laughs> oh goodness it is the eyes are the best part by minoki kim oh, i am really nervous about this one because it is it does sound really grotesque but i'm also so intrigued i just yeah this this is going to be different this is going to be different you know someone's insatiable hunger for eyes it's very different to you know investigating a murder <laughs> or a missing person but yeah that's the next one wish me luck let's take the cover off i mean that don't help taking the cover off because this is what i'm looking at now <laughs> oh yeah this is the scene that she sees in her dreams. Yeah. I think I'm going to go and grab a warm drink and do some housework. But then afterwards, I'm going to start reading this. So bear with me. I'll update you once I start it. I'm a little nervous now that it's coming to actually reading it. <laughs> but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll be fine just not one to read while you're having something to eat definitely not <laughs> so i've just read up to chapter 14 they're quite short chapters so i'm not like a gun in gun in it it's they, they are small chapters but i've just read up to chapter 14 and so it starts out where her dad is leaving her mom he's met someone else and her mum is distraught and her mum introduces um, fish eyes during their meal and the, her mum has never brought them out before to eat and her and her sister are both disgusted by it they're like oh no that's gross but with her mum remaining really down about her dad leaving she um, agrees to try one at one of the meals and then <laughs> After that, her mum starts having suspicious phone calls in the bathroom. She <laughs> asks her about it and then eventually her mum admits that she started seeing someone, a man called George. He arranges for them to meet so he can meet her two daughters. And while they're there, they notice that he is very arrogant. He's looking at other waitresses, like eyeing other waitresses up. Uh, orders for them don't let them order the food that they want and his opinion is their only opinion sort of thing and um, they go for a walk and she notices him 
like he grabs her to sit her down and she notices him like staring at her breasts and um, her skin and stuff and then she notices his eyes and finds them quite captivating and then it goes into the last chapter chapter 13 is the first time she enters in her dream the room um, at first she doesn't realize what is all over the walls and then she realizes that their eyes she is terrified it's very claustrophobic and then she decides to eat one and the room starts letting her it expand expand a little bit so she's like right that's how i'm going to get out of here i have to eat the eyes so then you have to hear about the taste and the texture while she's eating them it gets described to you which is a, uh, mm -hmm. yeah then eventually she does wake up and then she starts thinking about old family memories with her dad and her mom and why she's laid there with her sister in bed but yeah that's where it's just ended it's got to like the first part where she sees oh and she also realizes at the end all the eyes look like george's eyes who is the man that's dating her mother so yeah there's that it goes into detail of how like it tastes and like the texture and like just her swallowing them down and like the sliminess of them which is is something to read definitely don't read this if you're about to eat i'm glad i had just had a snack beforehand but i did make myself a latte not like there's much left of it but yeah that's where i've got to obviously when i come back i'm not going to tell you much more than what i've told you because i don't want it spoilery for anyone that may want to read this i don't think it's going to take me long because as well as it being quite a short book it is also a really quick read because of how short the chapters actually are so for instance this is chapter 14 it's literally three pages and then you're on chapter 15 so yeah i don't think this book is going to take me long to read at all so we may be able to squeeze another one in i don't want i don't know how long to make each vlog i don't want them to be over long because i don't want to bore you with my random rants and stuff but yeah i'm gonna read some more and then i'll get back to you on like my thoughts of how it's going but yeah it wasn't because i thought when i first read the synopsis i thought it was her sister's sister's boyfriend that she had a fascination with the eyes with but it's not it's her mother's and i thought it would have been something she's always been curious about and not just starts off with fish eyes that her mum introduced her to and then just really noticing george's eyes with the blue and everything so yeah it's 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 gone a bit different to what i thought but yeah the general concept of the book the eyes are the best part has um yeah 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 let me know if any of you have read the eyes are the best part weirdly i am enjoying it i'm enjoying like the family like the history of the family their stories their memories and connection between her and her sister and how they can communicate with just like a look on the face or mannerisms i i find that intriguing i love different forms of communication in books where it's not just speaking i like non-verbal as well as verbal communication in books it's still really intriguing me to say that what i'm reading about can be a little bit i'm i'm enjoying it though so yeah and i like that it's an easy quick read did i sit down here at my desk to edit a video i did have i done that no i picked up the book and started reading and then i was on chapter 13 so i thought i better start 12 13, 12 i would have been on chapter 12 and i thought i better start filming something to do with this book and um that's when i started filming but yeah i do need to edit i just want to keep reading so you know it says something about the book when you know when you just intrigued to how it's going how what what's going to happen 
and I'm very intrigued like I really want to know what's going to happen why what's going to happen with the obsession with George's eyes what's going to happen with the relationship between George and her mom regarding like him staring at other women and waitresses and stuff like he doesn't sound like the best of guys so you know oh I think I mentioned in a video once about me loving stickers and I said like if you could see my laptop I, I, uh, I like a good sticker. My friend made me this where it's the YouTube play sign and then it says Cuddy's Bookshelf. You can't really see it with all the other stickers, but yeah, that was really cute. It's just loads of like 90s and then games and nostalgic things like cat dog and some of my favourite games and stuff like that. So, and obviously BTS and Taylor Swift and, and that. That's what I meant when I says, if you could see my laptop, it's covered in stickers. It really is. <laughs> All that to say is that I've read some of the book. <laughs> Told you I'm going to run. Told you. Oh my God. I finished the book. So <laughs> I've literally not been able to put it down. I was like, oh yeah, I'll take it in the bath with me. I have not had a bath yet. I'm going to have one shortly now I've finished this. I couldn't stop reading it enough to run a bath. Oh my goodness. I, I really enjoyed this. Um, as much as it does get really queasy, it's got some, you know, graphic bits in here and it's quite gross. But, like, the, the way that it's written and the chapters being so short, you fly through this book like no one's business. I really enjoyed it. And I can't, I can't explain it because of spoilers, but the ending was really, really good. The way that she sort of starts off really normal and there's nothing that's overly weird about her that, and her slowly declining in like mental health wise, like depravity and everything, everything is going the more you get into the book the more you're like oh my goodness oh my goodness because you, you sort of root for her at the beginning because you're like yeah I totally agree with you and then she's then things start happening and you're like oh oh she's a bit morally gray and then you're like no no she's just gray and then you're like oh she is dark <laughs> and yeah so I really enjoyed this I think I'm going to give it a four star and I was I, I don't know what I was expecting from this. I was expecting to be grossed out and that lot, but it really gripped me. The story storyline really gripped me and the, the pacing and the plot that everything happened towards the end. I, I just really enjoyed it. So yeah, I can't believe I read it in a day. So we'll put that on here. And I do actually need one to read in the bath and tonight when I get into bed. So we will, I will go with this one. And it is number eight, which is here. I nearly said it sounds like a hardback instead of it feels like a hardback, but you, you know what I mean. Also sounds like one. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, oh no, I wanted to save this one. It's the only... So I'm really excited to read it. It is the Pumpkin Spice Calf. Um, it's the season to fall in love. As much as... This is going to be a really great difference between like the grotesqueness of the last book that I read. So a cosy romance is going to be great right now. I was hoping to read No One Rides for free like I was saying before. The Pumpkin Spice Calf. So that's what I'll be reading next. I should really like cut off this vlog at some point because you have had me setting up my car and everything. But maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I'll read this in the bath I will read it tonight maybe read read a bit more tomorrow maybe finish this book before I end the vlog so this will be the last book that I read during this vlog and then I will the start of the next week I will start a new book 
but yeah i'm looking forward to this i have seen it everywhere so i'm really excited for it but at the same time i wish i would have read the really scary book first <laughs> maybe i can fit a translated fiction in or something in between after i read the no one rides for free but yeah excited about this one hasn't gone as planned because I got up quite early I have been trying to get up early on my days off so you know I have daylight and everything but although it is quite rainy and grey today so you know not so much daylight more like gloomy light <laughs> but I have filmed this I've just filmed this I watched it back and I make no sense and that is because this morning I got up early and was going to set up, I was going to put makeup on and everything and I had a seizure. So I have been diagnosed, I don't know if I've mentioned these on my channel, but recently, last few months or so, maybe a bit longer than that, um, not sure. I have been having seizures. They are dissociative seizures, so they are non-epileptic attacks. And um, luckily for me at the minute, they have only been um, absent seizures. So I am still doing stuff, but I don't know that I'm doing it. I am not there. Like I am just wandering, doing stuff and then when I do come round, I just get really, really tired and have to go to bed. So I got up this morning and then I lost some time and then I was exhausted. So I think that I have had one. I ha don't have anyone in the house with me so at the minute. So I can't say that I definitely had one, but I can't remember a certain amount of time in my morning and I got really exhausted so I went back to bed <laughs> and so today is a pyjama day we're, we're rocking the Little Mermaid pyjamas and sorry for the jump scare about my face because yeah that's that's also you know it is spooky season so <laughs> but what I was saying was, last night I did read five chapters of The Pumpkin Spice Calf. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it is just to the point where Ginny has come to this small town and has inherited her aunt's um, calf. Her aunt hasn't died. She is wanting to travel more. So she wanted Ginny to take over her calf. So she has just moved and she is setting up to do so but she has been having hearing some noises in the back alley at night so she was hearing these noises and it starts off with her hearing these noises and she goes down with her baseball bat <laughs> and it turns out that this noise on this particular night is logan who is a man that is the produce for the calf he drops off the produce for the calf and he's just trying to deliver some pumpkins to a door. He says to her, basically, if you're having troubles within the village, um, like anything, they have town meetings. So there is one coming up. I think it was that night. And she was like, can you go with me? And he reluctantly agrees to go because he, he don't like the town meetings. But he is a handsome man. And... Yeah, it's sort of, they've been, they've just finished having the town meeting and that's where I am. So she has met Logan and she has said that she's going to start up the calf at the weekend in the town meeting because everyone's wanting the coffee. And then also in this little clip, I did film to say that I had two book deliveries today. One of them was A Pirate's, uh, a Pirate's Life for Tea which is a cosy fantasy packed with plunder. This is by Rebecca Thorne. This is what it looks like. And 
it is signed by the author i have never read it's got nothing on the hardcover or anything i've never read anything that is like a cozy pirate fantasy and i'm really excited about that but it does have a map inside it's quite a basic map it's always helpful to have one it does have sprayed edges which are also nice and i will read you the like the tagline inside and it says take a break with this gloriously cozy sapphic fantasy rife with mischief and steeped in fun and it says they'll face low shenanigans and high tides I just think it sounds really good. I can't wait to read my first like cozy pirate fantasy. Yeah, that's really exciting. And then the other book that got delivered today was Ruthless Vows. Obviously I have read Ruthless Vows. Absolutely adore this duology, but it is the TikTok Sprayed Edge edition. So there's nothing, no other like bells and whistles on it. It is just the fact that it's got sprayed edges. And the reason I got this is because I did pick up when the first time round when um, Divine Rivals was in the same. So now I have both of them and they look really beautiful together. I'm so glad that they did bring out the second one. I was hoping that they would. So they look lovely. I do have two other editions of these, which is you just your bog standard editions but these are the ones that i read and as you can see i really 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 enjoyed this duology so i do have some nice editions and i have my annotated editions although i do think they're just tabbed i don't think i actually annotated them but i do want to reread them and i'll go back and see what i tabbed annotate you know it's a whole thing i love a good reread of my books but yeah, I wanted to just catch you up. I'm sorry for the state of me. I did want to like do my hair again and put makeup on and actually make an effort. But I'm just so drained. I've got a really bad headache. So I'm sorry. Like, I, d I didn't want to mention all of the health things all of the time on my channel. Because, you know, this is the place I come because it's my happy space. So, but... I need to explain myself with these vlogs because obviously I'm, I'm doing the spooky season vlogs then I'll be doing the Christmas vlogs and if I do have seizures um, it needs to be something that I can I can explain if that makes sense but yeah that's one of the things why I wasn't filming last month is because I was having a few and I was just tired all of the time and when I have them my my speech I'm not coherent or my reading it's like I can physically read you know when it's in my head and I'm just holding a book and I'm reading this is fine but no reading out loud like thought to speech it's been and I'm so forgetful at the minute as well yeah that's what's going on today. I have a headache, <laughs> so I'm just moaning. I do apologise, but I will update you once I have read some more. I do need to edit a video because I need to get one out tomorrow. So as soon as this chuffing headache goes, I will be on that. I have just took some tablets, so hopefully they'll kick in soon. I want to edit. Get that ready for tomorrow and then I will feel a lot more lighter oh you're nice and soaking you're nice and soaking beans just braved going outside in the rain for a wee you feel relief now you brave girl for going out in that rainy weather oh she's soaked gross what i did come on here not to show you that bean has braved going out for a wee um, I have finished the pumpkin spice calf. Uh, this is exactly what it says on the tin. It's Ginny and Logan, you know, your everyday contemporary romance with cosy pumpkin feels. The town, small town vibes. It's really sweet, really nice. Um, it was very relaxing to read. I did enjoy reading it today because obviously it has been a slumpy day as in myself like feeling a bit 
exhausted so I'm gonna leave the vlog here with me finishing this one and once I get up tomorrow and do something with myself and it be more of a productive positive day I will unwrap my next book and start next week's vlog. I'm really happy with the books that I managed to read in this vlog. I'm sorry if this vlog is really long. I haven't put any of the footage together yet so I don't know how much I need to crop but yeah I'm, I'm gonna stick with these three for the first vlog. I probably had enough footage for this vlog with the first two but I couldn't help myself I wanted to go into another so yeah really happy with them I, I've enjoyed them in different ways like I say I didn't enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed the first two by Robert Gold um, but I this was a surprise for me like this I thought it was going to be grotesque and out of like really put me out of my comfort zone but it turned out really really good I enjoyed it very much and this is just it's like Ron Seal it does exactly what it says on the tin it's you know it's a cozy autumn fall whatever you say vibe contemporary romance and I really enjoyed it but yeah that's my first three books of spooky season I hope that you enjoyed this first week vlog with these vlogs because obviously I work full time as well they might be over so many days during that week but they will be over the time that I have spare in that week so I hope that you've enjoyed the start of the spooky season vlogs and I hope that you are celebrating with a lot of pumpkin spice stuff or cinnamon rolls and just cozy vibes candles blankets and it is the weather here is absolutely raining like it is torrential it hasn't stopped it's just been pouring for the last two days so it is like perfect cozy vibes and i hope that you've been enjoying those vibes and getting wrapped up nice and warm and decorating for spooky season and yeah i hope that you're excited for future vlogs and I hope that you are well. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. I will be wrapping throughout, like to pick out throughout the month. I'm not getting all my words wrong. Pens and eat. Why do I always sit with my legs crossed? Because every time, this one says, under a glistening full moon, a t uh, infertil inf infertility. Why can't I get that word out? If you're new to my channel and not seen any of my blo uh, blogs, never been one of them. Bobbing along. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Whew. The sellotape from the wrapping got stuck on the cover. Oh my goodness. But it's fine, it's fine. I can't say that as a spoiler <laughs> it's so difficult and yeah I've I've really enjoyed it enjoyed it that's because one of the characters called George oh my god no one writes for free for free for free ever read anything by anything by no oh god this is what the last video was like oh my goodness that's that was my whole thing just to say that I'm chilling out in my jammers which our little mermaid i you know primark dramas what can you say can't be him shit happens shit happens but we shovel through to the other side and then some more shit comes <laughs> no so i hope that you have in no three down a lot more to go